21. Calculate the delta S notch for the following changes. And then we have a balanced equation. We have two HCl gases plus uh, PB solid yields PBCl2 solid plus H2 gas. Okay. So we just want to find out what that delta S, delta S notch is. Well, remember, a delta S, that triangle means delta. That's a change. So we're seeing what the change in the entropy is. Keep in mind that entropy is randomness of molecules, right? Now, this one, since we have gases and solids and I have a solid and a gas, I can't really judge whether the overall delta S is going to be a positive or a negative. So this one, we're kind of going to leave it up to a question mark, right? Let's just see what we get at the answer. It's probably going to be pretty close. But let's see, what is the actual delta S value for this reaction? Well, if we're dealing with standards, that's what this little degree sign in the upper, you know, the upper right hand corner of a delta S is. That means that you got to go in the back of the textbook to find out your appendix values. So that's exactly what I did. So I found out what the standard S values are for HCl gas. That's 186.9. PB solid is 64.81. PBCl2 solid is 136.0, and H2 gas is 130.7. I don't have these numbers memorized. I'm sure that your teacher or professor won't make you memorize them. That would be really mean. <laughs> um, so these values would either have to be given to you on a test or quiz. So no worries about memorizing them. But now, what are we going to do with these values? Well, we're just going to use the formula, which is this right here. Delta S for an entire reaction is the sum, that's this little squiggly, that means that you're just going to add them up, right? So it's the sum addition of all your products minus the sum of all of your reactants. But now, do I keep these values or do I have to change them? Well, that goes by the coefficients. So for HCl's case, I have a 2 in front of here which means that I have to take this and times it by two. For PB solid, I, I only have one PB, so I would just you know technically have to times this by one. Same thing goes for PBCl2. There was only one here, so I would multiply this by one, which would be the same number, and the same thing for H2. So they would be the same. Now, keep in mind, remember, we have to sum up all the products and all of the reactants. Literally, there was a plus sign in the balanced equation. That's the sum. So I'm going to take this value and add it to this value. I'm going to take this value for my products and add it to the other product. Keep in mind that you do not add reactants and products. you got to keep the reactants one number and the products one number. So... Let's just add all this up. Let's get the total sum for the reactants. 186.9 times 2, because I have two of them. And then I'm going to add 64.81. And I get 438.61. Let's do the same thing for the products. It's just 136 plus 130.7. And I get 266.7. Here are your totals that you're going to be putting into your formula. So my delta S for my entire reaction is products minus reactants, 266.7 minus your reactants, which is 438.61. So my delta S for my entire reaction is, it's actually going to be a negative value. That's pretty interesting. 266.7 minus 438.61. I get a negative 171.9 if we take into consideration that we only should take one sig fig after the decimal. So it'd be negative 171.9, and the units are joules per mole times Kelvin. That's always going to be the standard unit for your delta S's if you're taking them from the appendix in the back of a textbook. And then I just want to say that whether you put your slash like this or the slash like this, it means the same exact thing. All right?
So I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to talking to you in future lessons. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye.